Hello, AP Calculus AB students. Mr. Record here from Avon High School. And with our final video, that's going to conclude our topic 1.14, which is all about infinite limits and the vertical asymptotes that they represent. And I just have one short example. It's example four in your notes packet. That's gonna allow us to kind of look at determining an infinite limit without having to use a calculator. And so the example four that I'm talking about looks like this. And if this looks a little familiar, we did encounter this when we had our discussion back with topic 1.9 uh, with our multiple representations of limits. So this is going to be a bit of a recap from that. So the directions say to find each limit to the best of your ability without using a calculator. It says, hint, try making a table of values, allowing x to get closer to one on the appropriate side. And we have the, the same function, one over x minus one. We're going to approach one from the left. We're going to approach one from the right. And you know, typically the first, the first thing that a student might do is think about just plugging one in for x. But the problem is you're going to get one divided by zero. And that doesn't give you any information about this particular limit, other than the fact that we're going to have to work harder. Um, we can't do any factoring and canceling and anything of that nature, and you don't get to use a calculator, so then the panic sometimes sets in. So what we're looking at doing here is we could make this table of values, so we have x's and then let's say 1 over x minus 1 values, and we don't have to get super fancy if we don't feel like it, but we can make an actual table. Uh, with lines and grids if we'd like to. So if x is going to approach one from the left, then we're kind of saying that our ultimate destination is this value one that we know is giving us an undefined result. So let's just meticulously approach this one. And it doesn't really matter how many values you choose. I might pick a couple here just to kind of get things rolling, but maybe we're gonna get close to one by using 0.99. I'll just choose that one at random. Well, we end up getting one over 0.99 minus one would be negative 0.01. Now granted, that's still underneath one, so we might need to simplify that. And upon doing so, we would end up with negative, and then one divided by one over 100 is just negative 100. So we don't want to think so rash to think to, to assume that the limit is negative 100. So we get closer to one on that left side. Maybe we'll go with negative, or I'm sorry, positive 0.999. Maybe let's throw another nine in there for good measure. So now we would have one over 0.9999 minus one is negative 0 0.0001. And what you get out of this is one divided by one over 10,000, which produces 10,000, albeit with a negative. So it's at this point we start to look at the behavior of the values as we're moving this way, getting even closer to one, and that would end up, of course, giving us negative infinity in this case. Now, I'd like for you to pause the video, if you wouldn't mind, and look at part B and try to answer it yourself, and then you could activate the video and see if you're correct. All right. Let's see how things went. So in this particular problem, again, you can set up the table much the same way. It's gonna look very, very similar. Now, depending on what your preference is, since X is approaching one from the right, I might decide to put my one on the very far left of the table and then approach accordingly. It doesn't matter if you do that. But you know what I'm gonna do here? I'm gonna cut right to the chase here because I think you guys start to see what's happening. I'm gonna go with 1.00001. So if I plug that in, 1.00001 minus one, of course, is 0.00001. Now that would be pronounced as one over 100,000, right, in the denominator. So if I were to simplify this, I would actually get 100,000. Okay. Another way you can do that, by the way, is if you want to move the decimal point over, what, five spaces, you would do the same thing in the numerator and get a one followed by five zeros. So at this point, we can say, hey, that's a big number. It's a big positive number. And thus, we should be able to conclude that positive infinity is the answer there. All right. So when you see these tricky limits like this, don't panic. Don't think that you can't solve them without a calculator. Just 
go back to your grassroots about what limits were all about in the very beginning of the course and set up that t-chart and plug in your values. Now to conclude, I've got a little calculus humor here to finish with. A teacher was explaining to her class the concept of infinite limits and she used the following example. And it's very similar to the problem that we just did, uh, except I'm replacing the uh, one with an eight that X is approaching and the denominator is an X minus eight instead of an X minus one. So because X approaches eight from the right side, we can slowly get close to that value of eight and then end up having one over some small de positive decimal here that's going to be infinity. All right, very similar to what we did in example four, the second part. Well, now feeling that her students seemed to understand what was going on, she called upon a student to tackle this limit problem. The limit as X approaches five from the right of one over X minus five. So the students got real excited and after contemplating the problem for a while, came up to the board and happily and confidently wrote this answer. Aren't limits a blast? <laughs> anyway, I hope this video helped out and we'll see you next time.